How is it going, everybody? Where is the energy post lunch? Yeah? Are you guys excited? Uh, very cool, very cool. So let's get it started with the afternoon session. We have still a lot of like panels, Farsa chat, incredible like keynotes happening, all about like you know uh, developer tooling and the uh, on-chain social on-chain ecosystem. Uh, we'll start next with the perfect match content design in Web3 UX. Uh, then we basically like turn into like different chats around like developer tooling. That will be also like interesting. How many developers do we have in the room? Yeah. Okay. Cool. 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 Very cool. Um, then we will like go next on what's next uh, at MetaMask, and then we will speak about Web3 apps and different like use cases that are happening around the ecosystem. Uh, and then we finish up with this fourth session, right? Like, well, so what's the Ethereum roadmap and what's happening after uh, around like 437 and, uh, and later? And then we're speaking about social experiments in Web3, so everything that is around like, you know, what's happening after, um, after you know, airdrop or how you can sustainable engage with both dApps, builder, and, uh, and users. And then basically we're doing like uh, two uh, finish um, uh, sessions around uh, pushing uh, the uh, pushing like the next uh, uh, kind of like what are the challenges, what's our next trend, and then we finish up with uh, with Joe and Dan doing a farsa chat. So that's quite exciting. So uh, without further ado, uh, I will uh, um, I will welcome uh, Corey and Io for the farsa chat. Big wow. round of applause. Awesome. Yeah, this is going to be pretty chill. It's not a typical panel. Right? <laughs> so yeah, Yeho and I both work on the design team. And I guess we'll start by each saying a little bit about what we do. And I don't know, I guess that you can get started, yeah, Yeho. I have post-lunch brain. <laughs> so if anyone understands that, uh, hit me up. But I'm a product designer on the delegation team. And if you haven't heard, we released our delegation toolkit Yesterday, I think, our engineers are here, my PM's here, I'm here, please come talk to us. We have activation booths. Um, and yeah, Corey, you're... Yes, and I am one of two content designers at MetaMask. I was the first content designer on MetaMask. I started like two years ago, and recently my team has doubled, as in there is now another content designer. And we work across everything that MetaMask does. So anything that Yeho is building in delegation, for example, I then am the word counterpart. Content design is essentially just designing with words. You know, it's also called like a UX writer or a product writer or a content strategist. So it has a lot of names and it's a relatively new discipline and I, there's probably like five of us in Web3 as a whole. So it's really exciting to be here with everyone. Yeah. I, I think we wanted to touch on the difference between content design and product design. I think a lot of people think about design as a usability, user interface concept. Maybe we can get started on the difference. So product design, who is a designer here in the audience? Oh, welcome. So you both know the, the pain points around communicating the, I, I don't know. Uh, getting buy-in and communicating the usefulness. We also have our researcher here. Design as a whole, I feel like, exists everywhere in the world. Everything you interact with, the chair you're sitting on, there's a concept behind it, there's a designer behind it, there's a purpose serving it. So anything that comprises an end-to-end -end process of solving a problem for a person is design. And I think that relates to content as well. So. Yeah, I, I would have to agree with that. Like, I think that in an ideal world, like design and content design, they can't really successfully exist without each other. Like, Yeho could create the most amazing interfaces, you know, something that's so amazing. But then, if no one knows how to use it or like what the words in the interface are actually intending to say, like. I don't know, sometimes you'll get a signature request and it's like 95% gibberish. And you're like, oh, should I click this? I don't know, maybe. But if the words were clear, you would know exactly what you should do and you'd feel confident in what you were doing. And then it would actually become like almost melded together as one. Like when you use your iPhone, for example, or your Android, um, 
you don't think about the fact that like, well, maybe the designers here do, but you know, you don't think about the fact that like, okay, this whole flow exists and you're not noticing like, here's the visual, here's the word, here's this, here's that. Like, it's just one cohesive organism. And I think that that's crucial for like building something that's actually successful is like thinking about how everything relates together. Like nothing exists in a silo. Yeah, and I think the important thing to note is that like you said in your presentation, words, oh, she gave a talk at the main stage. So did you, uh, <laughs> About words mattering, and that expands beyond the language we're speaking right now, which is English. My first language is Korean, and we have a Korean in the audience as well. Different people speak different languages, different customs exist, different placements of words and characters exist. So I think that's also something important that plays into design and something that MetaMask is also considering a lot all the time. And I think the most frequent question we get working on MetaMask design work is, when is XYZ coming? When are you releasing ABC? What is the process like? And really, we have, I think Rachel, our head of design said, we have 19 different pods existing across our entire um, design work. And we also have amazing PMs, but the interaction between content, design, research, product, business stakeholders, clients, that partners, it's a web. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a web, and it feels as if it's a living organism as well. Um, we also wanted to leave a few minutes for if anyone had questions. So. We can keep talking, but also if anyone has questions for us, I mean, feel free to raise your hand or, yeah, you know, if there's something you've always wanted to ask a UX designer or, or a content about meta designer. About design. Yeah. I think the well, just, important part is, for me, I, I wouldn't be doing my best work without content. And content really shapes how things are placed or how things are laid out especially when it comes to different types of languages and internationalization. Yeah, definitely. Like, it sounds very, I don't know, it sounds so simple when we say it out loud, but it actually gets quite complicated, right? Like, we work together so closely, um, like, you know, Yeho has a Figma file and she shares it with me, but then once we're both in the file, like, editing and designing together, like, things really come to life in a way that I think, um, a lot of uh, applications and products in Web3 need to, I don't know, take note of how, not to say that you should like, you know, buy anyone's style or anything, but like take note of how things exist in like successful apps within and without Web3 that you can be inspired by and you can see that there probably was like thought in every decision that was made and like the thoughtfulness becomes like, almost, it just, it's like it's unconsciously affecting the user in a way that you have so much power that you should wield it wisely. And the way to do that is by engaging with both content design and product design and research and just making sure that, you know, what you're doing is actually getting across the message that you're trying to get across. Yeah. Yeah. Or, oh, yeah. Georgia? See if it's working. That's a microphone? Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? The reason why this is a mic because I can launch it to people like this. I feel like that's not very hygienic. So, <laughs> no. Um, uh, I think um, uh, I'd like your uh, perspectives on this. One of the problems with content design, specifically words, for people building applications that might not have a lot of UX experience, words feel like the easiest thing because everyone writes them all the time. So you might put the least amount of time and thought into the words or you know, really deprioritize them over things that appear more complex. How do you think we can get um, more builders to spend more time thinking about uh, how they communicate the, the product and the words that they use throughout the experience as well? That's a great question, Georgia, and I think it actually kind of relates, the answer sort of relates to something you mentioned in your panel earlier, which is thinking outside of like the bubble that you exist in, like a developer, developers are brilliant, like every developer in here is like so smart, but you also are only engaging with folks like yourself and you're not thinking beyond like, okay, this one like 
use case that I'm building this for needs this for this, but if you remove yourself from that and you look at it from a different perspective, you'll see that the language you use to talk amongst yourselves isn't what probably 99% of people are using. So you are unintentionally alienating people without, like obviously when you alienate someone you don't mean to, but you, know, you're like, you, you have the control that you just, you can simplify this, you can strip it down, you can be as empathetic to someone as possible, but you need to step outside of yourself and really think about how everything we communicate with each other, whether it be body language or actual like verbal language, like it's always, you're always communicating with people and people are always picking up on the vibes and the same applies for an app or technology or anything. Like these all exist and they're part of our lives to the point that it's, it's like our constant companion and you have to think about how that companion is interacting with you. Like if you have a dog, for instance, your dog makes certain noises and you know what they're saying, but they're not saying this in English. And I think that's sort of, this is a weird point I'm making, but I think it relates to words in that way. Like it, 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 communication goes so deep and even though we can all communicate, not everyone is naturally good at writing but everyone could be better and we, you know, if everyone tries and just you know, see how people are talking to each other and you can, you can do it or you can engage with a content designer. Email guys to ask questions at us. Is that the... Hello? Are you guys able, do you guys like A-B test your content? And then sort of see what sort of effect is having on end users, uh, or do you have a scenario where you can talk about like changing content uh, has some sort of uh, like visible impact on, uh, say, like a, a certain feature being used or a certain ad way being taken in, in, in the in the UI? Yeah, that's a really great question. Um, I think in former places that I've worked, we were more engaged in A/B testing. I think MetaMask is really great at sort of experimenting as we go and also really giving designers and content designers and everyone, PMs even, like the power to perform our own research. Like I've gone deep with my fellow, count, uh, my counterpart content designer, Sally, who's not here today, but she and I have gone very deep lately, like showing people words and flows and just people who aren't in crypto, just like people who are crypto curious or who just we randomly found on the street um, and seeing how they feel about things and just getting people's gut reactions is so powerful that we learned a lot um, and also having the power to perform our own tests like I know Yeho tests all the time as well and you really learn a lot um, quickly and yeah so uh, that's I don't know if that answered your question no it does uh, I mean uh, it makes sense you guys sort of get feedback out in the street or from wherever uh, in a few months or sh shake your... Uh, yeah. Lady. And we also definitely pay attention to what people are saying on like crypto, Twitter, and in broader spaces and things that customer support has told us. Like they're oftentimes sending me messages about like this one term and this one flow actually caused a problem for like this percentage of people or someone reached out regarding X, Y, Z. We might need to work on that. And we really take that to heart and we're like constantly iterating and trying to, trying to do the best for the users. So I mean, feedback is always welcome. And I think we had a question back there. Yeah, so EO, is that your question for you? Um, so I'm curious uh, what maybe you could speak a little bit about being a product designer on a product which is sort of has number one in terms of market gear, yet at the same time, all of us hear that, you know, we get the next million onto Web3, it's about making it simpler and almost like your product needs to become invisible. So I guess I'm curious how, how that sort of factors in to you as a product designer of I'm designing a product that every, not that I would say everybody, but in many ways does want to become less in people's face. Yeah, you're kind of, are you my PM? Because <laughs> um, with delegation, that's something that we ask ourselves all the time. How do we maintain the integrity of 
Web3, which is about decentralization, autonomy, um, like maintaining an identity that you can define for yourself on, I don't know, like on-chain, off-chain, while trying to onboard the next, I, I, don't, I know you don't like this phrase either, the next billion <laughs> users, uh, which, is, which needs to be more specified to what type of users we're talking about. Um, I'm kind of on a ramble here, and I don't know if I'm answering you correctly or in the way that's helpful to you, but for the specific team that I'm on, which is delegation, we are trying to define it, or at least me from a product design perspective, defining it in a way where I want to segment the type of users that exist, but it's really like a B2B2C product right, DAP developers need to adopt the SDK, and then we're going to learn how, how we want to define our roadmap based on what their users are asking for. And it could be a headless approach, it could be a headed approach, you really don't know. So I think it's constant openness to pivoting. I've had so many designs paused, start or stop, but being, or having the open mindset to say, okay, we're pivoting, but I'm gonna have my North Star vision on onboarding this type of user or making XYZ simpler. Um, at, and content plays a really big part in that. Corey's been really big in helping me iterate and experiment with words. Um, I also have a really big vision towards Actually, I don't, I'm not gonna, I, I do this all the time. I'm like, towards, and then I don't reveal it because I don't know if I can reveal it. Um, dot, dot, dot. Towards dot, dot, Stay dot. Stay tuned. Sorry, I went on a ramble there. But really, one, experimentation requires openness and collaboration, not just with other designers, because mostly I'm in silo as a designer, but with PMs, builders, Corey, um, to going out there experimenting on your own, um, three, like the concept of an invisible product isn't really invisible because product experience itself, user experience, it's tangible in someone's cognitive and emotive and behavioral patterns. Because if you're adopting it into your life, then essentially it is igniting a yeah. feeling or a thought yeah. or a behavior you end up adopting. So Yeah, although I do, I, 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 f I agree with Yeho, but I also see what you mean regarding invisibility because if you think about it, like not to always talk about phones, but I think they're the most like relatable thing for everyone in this room, probably for most people in Brussels. Um, it's just like, it's invisible to you, but it's, still there, it's tangible, but it's not, tan like it's physically there, it's there in your mind at all times, but it's become such a part of your life. You're not like, yes, iPhone, I will do this, you know? So I think as, as we continue to get more like real people adopting this technology, and I think delegation and, you know, embedded wallets, and as that continues to grow, um, it's really a powerful time for both content design, product design, for everyone, I think, involved in building and creating because this is, this is like, it's kind of like a now or never, make it or break it sort of period. And we really have to like go all in on optimization of, of building something for real, regular humans. And one last thing is that I, I make sure that I'm involved early on in the process. I, I don't think designers should adopt or inherit a product brief after it's defined. I don't believe in that whatsoever. I think we need to be in the forefront of helping PMs define what a user experience means for a certain line of product. And that's what I'm lucky enough to do with delegation. Um, and I know we're super over yes, time. we're out of time. Yeah. But also, when you're involving product designers, also invite content designers and yeah. And researchers. <laughs> and researchers. <laughs> Thank you. So how, how we're getting more, uh, more designers into Hackathon, this is the question. Huh?